Hello, folks. It's George Leoniak, and welcome to New Geometry. Today, I'm here to share a little bit more on the crystal spiral in relationship to the golden spiral, along with more information on the uh, Cathar grid and working with the Rush Reush God Seed. And uh, we're going to turn that into the golden God Seed and just see how all these sort of things relate to golden geometry in relationship to the crystal spiral, Cathar grid, Kilantic science. And uh, I have a presentation set up for you for this. So I'm gonna switch over to sharing my screen and we're gonna jump right into it. Now uh, I'll uh, share that I'm not a heavy, uh, heavily well-versed in the Kilantic teachings, although I do analyze it from a structural geometry standpoint quite a lot and have quite a few videos already out that are pretty popular on YouTube discussing you know, what the 3D geometry of these structures are and some on the spiral itself. And one of the key features that really kind of interested me in this, hold on, let me take these guidelines off. Uh, static guides are off. Okay, one of the things that really, uh, interested me in this was the golden spiral relationship to the center of the grid. And one of the key factors or key points that the Cathara um, Kelantic science folks interested in Kelantic science talk about is that the spiral center of the crystal spiral nicely goes right back towards the center. But as you can see that the golden spiral here, the origin on these cross uh, diagonal through the golden rectangles here, puts the center off. And of course they bring in the Fibonacci rectangle as well, which the two are different. Um, but as you can see in these examples here that are taken from the document Spirals of Creation that's available for free on emerald24.org. Um, certainly a great read to, to read some of this material. But I think there is something wrong with the assessment. Well, not wrong, of course, but a uh, different view that we can look at this. And uh, I wondered if this was a true representation that the golden rectangle will just fit right on top of the grid like this. So um, what I've discovered recently was that the rectangle as presented there in this diagram isn't really doing justice to the comparison between these two spirals because the rectangle as it's drawn with golden ratio circles, so you need to add the golden ratio circles to this square template, will actually put the rectangle at the tilted variety here. And this is gonna have all sorts of structural geometry implications that we're gonna get to. There's gonna be all sorts of forms that are associated with this. But for now, let's just take a look at this and see that this is what the rectangle looks like. It lines up on all these vertices quite easily. And the uh, you know 45 degree segments here, right? All the way around, dividing the 90 degree in half. They're gonna all nicely give you the coordinates that you need to draw in the remainder of the squares, which I don't have on here, but you can easily just connect the dots and draw those rectangular, the, the squares in each of these rectangles and continue to go all the way down. I have a slide showing that in just a moment. But this will put the spiral not off center at all. It's going to put it smack in the center of our source of creation, center of point, which I believe is everywhere in every, every place is the center. Um, but in our drawings of our diagrams, we can have a center over here if we want. But let's just say this is our, our center that we're going to work off of to make the comparison. So let's just take a look at these two spirals. As you can see, we got our crystal spiral nicely going along here, just picking up each of these, uh, you know, one half of each of these squares, basically a half of each edge of the square. And our golden ratio spiral, the golden spiral, is also going to pick up squares. I'll show you in a moment as it works its way around into the center too. The squares are really different. This model here is not going to fit on this structure of the square within square within square. For the golden spiral, it's going to take a different uh, progression. 
And what happens here is that the progressing squares for the golden ratio, the golden spiral, they don't decrease at a one divided by square root of two. If you divide this by square root of two, you get to 0.5, divide that by square root of two, you get 0 0.35, onward and onward and onward. That's what's happening here. Starting with any, any number divided by the square root of two is gonna get you the next smaller edge length of the square. Now, of course, what I'm showing you here is this is the one square. This square is the second square in the sequence. This is the 0.5 square. And then this is the rotated square in the sequence. And this is the other golden spiral square. And let's say that's these two are the same size. The next square down is one divided by phi. So that gives us the 0.618 edge length, and then that will be divided by phi 0 0.38, that divided by phi 0 0.23, on and on and on. Now, what I wanna show you here, just as a visual really, is just what's happening with the uh, progression rate between these two spirals. This spiral is very, very fast in terms of its compressive ability, um, the phi ratio one that is, because the successive squares are going uh, very, very quickly towards the center. And we can kind of see that in the spirals progression here, as this one's kind of working its way around, picking up each of those edges. This one is just whipping right around and we've already come back around and maybe you know a few times crossing this, this line here. So we've gone one, two, three. And here we're going to go one, two, and then we're back at center. So anyway, this is a kind of crude analysis, but as you can see, the, the progression of the squares are in the same amount of distance, let's just say, the same amount of edge lengths added up the four to this uh, very steady, smooth progression here of uh, eight, eight progressions to four, really, as it's working out there. So anyway, I think someone might have some fun like checking that out a little bit more than me. I just put it in here. Now, the other one over here, this diagram is just because I did it on the central squares, but this one I did it for the golden rectangle in comparison to the actual edge lengths that the crystal spiral is made up of. And we also get that four to eight kind of progression as well. Um, so these next slides are really just to kind of show, you know, there's a lot, the crystal spiral is going to, you know, this is pretty much uh, what it does. And we could put that in different places on this grid, which is quite cool design wise. Um, but let's just look at the golden spiral because it really hasn't been depicted very often, probably uh, at all that I see unless a creative artist is able to get it into the center and work with it. But this is a very easy drawing technique to put it right in the center easily. It's just as easy as doing the crystal spiral and finding center. Just add the golden ratio circles, like I'd say probably uh, 0.618 of my videos uh, describe using golden ratio circles. So um, we're going to... Uh, show in this one just how those golden ratio scaled squares, basically uh, you picture this as a spiral, it's just going around here, boom, boom, boom. And it's picking up each corner of the square the below it as it continues on. And that's really what the spiral uh, progression follows. Now I did this of course on the, uh, on the iPad drawing here and uh, I scaled this way, way out. So even though this looks like it has a geometric end, and even if we did this with the crystal spiral, I could continue to uh, zoom further and further into that. And uh, both of them will infinitely go on and on and on to uh, closer and closer to a zero point. So we can also, um, the Pentagon will also integrate into this design. Basically, when you add smaller golden ratio circles along each of these edges going towards the center, that allows a way to draw a pentagon very easily with a kind of certain design technique. But it does relate that uh, to my previous video and the one before that about the golden spiral's origin, which I have discovered is at the center of any pentagon face. So this will put it in all these nested pentagons um, all the way down to the heart of this uh, drawing. We have these nested pentagons and they're rotating around as it goes and uh, following the sequence. So here the point is here, here's the point here, one point here, point, point, 
point, point, goes around like that. So we could follow one point and that will follow that progression. Um, so the other thing is that I found that I described in that video is really that this golden spiral is, you know, showing up to be at the origin of a lot of places, even just at the intersection of a dividing the line into phi proportion actually is the creation of a golden spiral at that golden point. So uh, that video, you can check out more on that. It's also, you know, some other places at the center of the dodecahedron. Of course, that's a pentagon face, but it's also at the icosahedron uh, vertice that intersects, uh, that, that touches the face of that uh, dodecahedron. So I'd recommend checking out that video if you're interested in that forms and how they relate to the spiral. Um, this is just another version of this, just uh, showing the two spirals here. We could have two from each of these corners. We can have eight spirals going off here. And uh, this is just two following this geometric progression with the decagons now involved. So uh, just some very, very cool, you know, not, you know, it's tricky to get all those pentagons, but if you're a creative uh, artist who wants to explore some cool golden ratio spirals going in the center of your drawing. This is a very neat way to do it. Okay, now we're gonna jump out of the spiral for just a moment because I wanna revisit some of the material in my first video and get back into the heart of the God Seed, which is um, very central to the Kailantic uh, divine blueprints studies of geomancies and ascension. Here's this little thing from the dictionary that says uh, the most powerful all geomancy's ascension and stargate navigation tools that's recently returned to humanity. So of course, I'm interested in checking this out. This is the design, eternal life creation, the Chris code, and uh, you know some uh, other images that make it up. Now, I, uh, you know, I don't see the phi ratio too much discussed in much of the teachings, but what I'm discovering is that the phi ratio is found throughout all of this Kalantic studies uh, in, in the diagrams themselves, maybe not in the teachings themselves, but definitely in the diagrams. Here's just uh, the Cathara grid as it's laid out. We can do this grid at you know, different places within here. I put it in the center because it's gonna align to the geometry that lays out further. But uh, as I was just saying, the, uh, the phi ratio, and then this is a slide from my previous video, uh, is found all throughout this Rush God Seed, and the formula for phi is basically found within the layout of the two circles that encircle the eight circles and the circle that is making up the eight circles. We get phi ratio divisions, and the formula itself here being if this is the square root of five, and that's a 0.5 inch on either side, well, that is the formula square root of five plus one. If we divide this whole section in half, we've got 0.618 on either side. So the phi ratio is hidden in formula, the hidden in plain sight within the golden god seed. Uh, well, that's not the golden god seed yet. It will be shortly um, because uh, I've added golden ratio circles to it, but just hold on a sec to see that. So in my previous video though, I came up with this nifty drawing that I really, really loved. And uh, because all of a sudden I found this awesome way to create the golden spiral just from those eight circles and these connecting lines to that root five circle. This would be the circle around the eight that gives you all those other golden proportions. But anyway, I found this golden spiral within here and it was so sweet because it gave you all the intersecting lines to draw the squares. You didn't have to step your compass around at all. It just worked nicely. But wait a second, the spiral once again was off-centered and we could turn this into an octahedron and it would divide the octahedron edge. Of course, that's the eight-sided platonic solid like this. And divide that edge into phi ratio on both sides of it. And we've got spiral origins out of each of those if we wanted to. Um, or a crossing point of the spiral, but it was still off center. So, you know, in that video, I was just getting into how we get to center, but I didn't quite have it all pulled together. And then shortly after that video, I started to make some discoveries that are going to help that you've seen some of already, but we're going to, we're going to integrate this all into the God Seed. Here was the one really kind of groundbreaking discovery that I haven't seen really anywhere. I mean, in this square view, there are are many methods to get phi ratio division. I mean, this is a, if we just put a square around this, we're, 
we're already people have documented doing phi ratio within this. But this was a very neat one that the outer circle here, and let's just call it uh, two inches, each of these circles would be one inch. Well, this circle on the inside of it, if this is a one inch circle here, that circle would be golden ratio. That would be a radius of 0.618 to the one. And I thought that was just so cool because that circle basically, it, not basically, it's a, it is touching each of these circles. It's like drop a marble in between these other circles that are overlapping in this way, and you'll be creating a phi ratio division from the two inch circle to the 0.618 times two circle here. So that was very, very cool. And it easily allowed me to create this golden rhombus because we have a length of the rhombus to uh, one inch to 0.618, let's say. So we have the golden rhombus and we're gonna revisit that drawing in just a little bit. Um, so that was definitely a new discovery. And it also then led to a method to put the whole golden rectangle and the golden spiral now right into the Roosh seed geometry and we are once again able to tilt that rectangle over to the side a little bit and then spiral that down into the center. And now we've got our golden spiral, not off like to the side with that rectangle oriented straight, but really oriented in the way that the geometry is going to show all that compressive geometry that I was showing before of the infinite center that is at the heart of this spiral where it's going. We're able to do that right here in this uh, design, no problem. Here are all the points, top of the circle, the corner of the square, Ooh, this could be a square here, this corner point at that pedal. We're down over here at this edge of the circle here, we're down at this phi ratio circle that nests in the eight, and there we've got it. And of course, also all the edge lengths I've said to put the squares in it are all easily in there because they all cross the eight directions. So. It fits perfectly in there and follows the 45 degree segments to actually step in the rest of the squares as we go around. This is totally different than a Fibonacci spiral because this is always going to divide into a smaller golden rectangle, even starting from the very smallest point we could ever go into this. We'll continue to compress down to a golden rectangle. Now I've made this the golden god seed because I wanted to see if there was more to this. And anytime I ever add golden ratio circles to any type of template, there's always more to it. So why not add them here? So I did, I put the golden ratio circles within here. And uh, you know, it's very, very cool to see what will happen next because it allowed me to easily draw the icosahedron. Now the icosahedron, okay, well, that's not centered in our diagram, but that's okay because we know that this golden rectangle is with inside this icosahedron. So that spiral is inside this icosahedron going down here at the dotted lines with inside this icosahedron. Remember, that's the 20 sided platonic solid. And we're looking at it from an edge view. It's not the typical view you see, at least from the incorrect one in Metatron's cube. But uh, typically you see it facing with the big triangular face. But for this one, when you hold it this way, you will get a nice flat golden rectangle with the edge across the center, going across that uh, center line there. And there's the rest of the golden rectangle. Spiraling down into the center. And there we go. We have some structural geometry now brought into this that it's not just some golden rectangle hanging out. This is important because, uh, you know, for when I first got into studying the Cathar grid, I didn't really get the sense that there was a geometry to it. I, there was nothing really, what is this design really? You know, is it structural forms? I did a lot of videos saying that it was related to the octahedron because this would be square within square. You can do cubes and squares, very much related to this. Not a lot of phi ratio going on in this. There can be a lot going on. It's just not easily depicted in the drawing. So I did a lot of videos discussing how the Cathar grid is related to a structural geometry related to the pyramids of the octahedron. Well, this one, of course, because it's uh, related to the golden rectangle is also gonna have the structural geometry that's related to the icosahedron and dodecahedron. Now, of course, the nice thing about that is that because it's the icosahedron and dodecahedron, 
you, once you get to the dodecahedron, which of course is right inside this, in fact, the dodecahedron origin of the bottom face of the dodeca, basically these are two dodecahedrons in here touching face to face here, that's the center of the spiral. Because remember, at the center of this dodecahedron is the spiral origin. So right here at this point, this is the bottom of the point meeting there. You put another one on the bottom there, that's the spiral there. Oh, at the top here, that's a spiral there as another dodecahedron. It's going to be a column of dodecahedron similar to like what we've seen with Dan Winter's um, DNA model, you know, looking at it from a top-down perspective or for the so from the side and looking at a co coil of DNA going through a dodecahedral process of stacked dodecahedron and icosahedron in this case. So um, we can add the, the two spirals as I was just saying, well, here's one going up and around this way. And this is just one way to draw the spiral in here. I've gone with the traditional method of kind of putting them in the squares, but we can also do one on the outside. And I like that drawing because it does look cool to have the spiral go up to the top of the vertices and follow the outer edges. But we went with this one. This is basically showing you that I've got this one cathara unit here in the black, right? So I don't have the rest of the lines in there because we don't really need them for this. But it is just showing where it is. Well, look at this. We've got the cathara unit. Remember, this is that same drawing that I showed you back here without all the twisty stuff going on in the middle. But if we scroll back down this top point and middle point, then I'm really interested. And of course, we can add a bottom one, but let's just take the top one. So here we are, we've got, uh, we've got the top point. Well, hey, that's a spiral origin because remember that's the top of the dodecahedron. It's in a golden rectangle. All I've done is flip the golden rectangle around. So we've got that squares going this way instead of the other and that will just follow around there. So, hey, at the top of the Qatar grid, we can call that an octahedron if we wanna. Let's just mess with the geometry and put it anywhere we want. Great, we can have octahedrons and icosahedrons together. And if I wanted to, I could put a star tetrahedron in there. We can have everybody can be involved. But let's just keep it simple and say this little unit, whatever it was before I called it an, an octahedron, that touches the top of the spiral, the middle touches it, and of course the bottom will touch it too. So basically the Qatar grid and the golden god seed, colonic science, has got golden spirals all over it. So, you know, the crystal spiral is totally amazing. I love that root two uh, compression, but golden ratio is equally uh, as important as we can see in nature around us. And hey, they're not source, they're not disconnected from some source point, as I'm showing here. They're both very well integrated to spiral back to a center point. It just was all about reframing, reframing the geometry until, you know, figuring out how that golden rectangle is really oriented in the diagram. And for that, we had to think out of the box and get into the, you know, the golden, the golden circles integrated into the square view pattern. So I think that really made a big, uh, a big rotation in my understanding of this, because really what this did is it did put the icosahedron on its vertices like this. So really what we're looking at is an icosahedron spinning on the vertice. Now I put the other icosahedron in there. So we've got two, we've got the one at the bottom. This is gonna do some really cool stuff later on. I'm not there yet, but I'm just fleshing out the rest of the diagram so you can see what's in there. And of course that doesn't prohibit us from actually putting a uh, icosahedron right in the middle. So I got three happy icosahedrons, pretty much all nested one on top of the other or we have structurally inside. I know there's a lot of lines going on, but you could really see that there could be this kind of ratcheting type of motion. And, you know, probably our DNA, if following a pentagonal structure from the top view, has probably got a lot of this type of thing going on. Now, what happens though, if we take our upper icosahedron and our lower icosahedron, and we wanna make an icosahedron out of the whole thing, right? So everything can be in an icosahedron and it's all just one big Russian nesting doll. And I can infinitely make little icosahedron in here or continually go out. So if we do extend the edges here, well, that's great because it actually just fits right within the golden god seed, the big one on the outside, the largest circle that we have there. And it will also, these points are easy to pick up. You just, you know, they're going to cross at this point. It doesn't match a circle intersection, but I'm, I'm still good with that. And uh, we have a larger icosahedron all around the whole thing. And there we go. We've got uh, just the one big icosahedron, pretty much the whole golden god seed is that icosahedron. Now, remember, we can 
do a lot more here. This can be a compound of the dodecahedron, but right now, this is the furthest uh, usually way, the one way to nest the platonic solids is to have a big old icosahedron like this, and then you have a smaller dodecahedron, which I should have somewhere just right around here. This smaller dodecahedron is right within the top and the bottom of this, so it's right in there. And once you've got the dodecahedron in this nested inside there, well, then you have all the other platonic solids in there too. So everything's in this already. And, you know, it's just everything's in that icosahedron, and we could compound it as well. But what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to take our big icosahedron and we're going to take the little one that was also created in the middle and we're going to rotate that, uh, pretend it's, you know, facing with one point this way and it's a flat edge back here. Well, let's just rotate it around and do it. Uh, so we got a point over here now and we got a flat edge back over here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just spinning this around, but I'm stopping it at a 180 degree uh, rotation from point to point. So we create a decagon really. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we've got seven, eight, nine, ten. Those four points are directly on the backside. And what we got is now we've got kind of, uh, I don't know, like a, like a, like a circus, uh, what do they call that? Uh, horse ride that goes around and around, merry-go-round, that's it. We got a nice merry-go-round, big circus tent, merry-go-round, and it's gonna just keep spinning around. And uh, it, you know, there's an infinite amount of points when we do get that going, because you could just spin that around and it will just go. Um, so, but I wanna talk a little bit about what's going on, because this one has this kind of extended edge. Here's the other form in red inside, which is the same as this one here, except to have not extended the edges. So we will do that here because that's how it's going to continue to kind of expand and grow is through the extended edges. And we're going to get a kind of infinite series of uh, basically uh, uh, this, this form, this kind of flying saucer -y type of form, in the next one too, and every single one of these, I don't have the one in the middle, I just have this one and this one, will uh, you know, continue this type of progression and you'll have this nesting of one within the other and the God seed will also do that as well. This, this whole circle pattern will continue to expand just like I showed you in the spiral of how the whole spiral decreases in the infinite compression of phi ratio or expands in that way too. So this whole thing, though, is very, very simple. And uh, for this, oh, I do have that little thing. Um, for this, it's very, very cool. I mean, the whole drawing is really just a golden rhombus. This is the whole thing of this, you, you know, this, uh, this, all the structural geometry of all these icosahedron nested with inside one another and everything I've just described really is just the golden rhombus. Because remember, here's a golden circle with an edge length. So let's just call that one uh, the 0.618 and the length of that rhombus of one. So it was really the whole thing was just structurally created. I mean, it's just simply created right in the beginning. And really it's nothing more than just a flat golden rhombus. But all we've done is just spun it around like this. And if I'm doing this just with one flat, Thing. really it's all the structural geometry that I've just described going through a gazillion decagons, 360 degrees, and every little increment you can ever imagine in between would be those decagon, would be the icosahedron and all those other forms oriented with the icosid vertice upright. Now, of course, we can put the octa in there upright or the tetrahedron or upright, but this is the way that it easily aligns to all the drawings from the side view perspective. Now, remember, this is a side view perspective. It's not the top down view of it. The top down view would uh, be drawing from a pentagonal perspective. So this square view is giving us a side view perspective. It's the same side view perspective that da Vinci drew uh, the Vitruvian man in was with the square in a square, square view orientation as a side view. It's the same type of view that we're dealing with here. Um, and I made little forms here of this too, because it's always exciting and interesting to do that. And here is one of them. Uh, and basically it is just a golden rhombus that if it were flat, it would be a golden rhombus. But now 
It's, you know, a uh, decagon with a smaller decagon. And inside this little structural shape is the other shape that just pops out just like that. So this is looking very, uh, very space age to me and, uh, you know, very flying saucery. Uh, and we're going to get into, I mean, the uh, light body, uh, relationship to the light body here in just a moment, which is meant to be the design of the chariot for one's own evolution in uh, ascension, just as the God seed from the beginning of the description is supposed to be all about. So let's get into that just a little bit. So um, the golden God seeds uh, new form, and we're going to explore the light body. Now, as I was working on this, I got a little hit to go check out Trinvalo's work because I've always enjoyed thinking about and feeling into the structural geometry in and around the body. And I've wanted, he has some drawings in the back of his book, which are unfortunately not right here that I can show you, but I do have the slides on here. I wasn't gonna show them, but I, I will show his overlays on here just very, very briefly. Um, but in his book, he has a whole structural geometry section that discusses uh, the light body with the star tetrahedron um, with the vertices facing upright. So where's a star tetrahedron here? Uh, don't have one right here, but we've got the, you know, the, the tetrahedron facing down and the tetrahedron facing up. Oh, I have one right here. Great. Uh, you know, the one facing up and one down. So in his drawing, he has that at the center. And in his description there, he talks about, you know, this would be um, in, in his book, though, he does say that this is really like your beginning entry into sacred geometry, because he, in, the, in that section, it will branch out to the dodecahedron in an orientation with the pentagon flat, just like I'm showing in this section with the pentagon flat. And he talks about the stellated dodecahedron, right? which would be this, and he talks about it being stellated, and the drawing it doesn't look like an icosahedron in the end. I'm not sure what he was working on, but it's not 100% accurate to the stellation of a dodecahedron, but he is talking about at some point that the orientation of the whole thing from here to the bottom is a stellated dodecahedron, but structurally it doesn't really work out with the star tetrahedron at the base, right? At the very center of that, because that cube in there, or that star tetrahedron, in that dodecahedron is going to be tilted. So whatever, you know, however it works out, however people want to integrate these different caps, you know, that they can filter their information through, you can do it any way you like. But one of the things that I like to, uh, to, to analyze in that was, does my drawing that I've worked on, this little shape here with the merry-go-round, uh, saucer does that lay out to that outer golden ratio circle which was around the whole diagram so i'll just back up here and i wait i forgot one nifty little thing i forgot to move that out of the way there's our golden rhombus so you could see that that whole thing is just a golden rhombus um overlaid over top of that that just goes back to that very simple simple design it's just two golden circles basically giving you the length and the width it's at the heart of new geometry, really. Everything is about the golden circles and the whole, this whole form is just contained in two golden circles. It's that easy. Uh, the whole thing is right there. It's just all the other points are not there. Um, but the basic simplicity of the whole design of the, the whole, this whole shape with all this other structural geometry of all those forms is implicit in this side view version of this with, uh, like this. So, um, Okay, well, here's the thing about uh, Drinvalo's uh, diagram here is does that outer circle, which uh, would be this big outer circle, in relationship to the little red circle that I've got in here, does that, or this little shape, well, how does the human body fit into that? So I roughly scaled this out, and these are 55, 56 little increments. And he says that the projection of that auric disc that extends beyond our body to this larger circle here would be pretty much in a kind of like a Fibonacci sequence would be 50, not 55 feet away from the center. Well, I sent this out and 
I've made this person be about roughly six feet high um, by just counting all these little vesicas all the way till we get to the end. And this is, uh, you know, nearly, I mean, it looks like it's right on the edge. It's just a little over, but hey, I'm close enough. I'm good. It's 56 feet, whatever. But, you know, it's definitely showing me that the geometry there from what he's shown uh, in the book actually lays out to some real structural geometry that I've shown. And he says that there's so much geometry, you know, between this point of the star tetrahedron, which he has here, up and out to this point, um, you know, that it's a little overwhelming with a lot of lines. Like it, it probably is here for you, but let me just, uh, you know, show what's going on. And now this is... Uh, true to the icosahedron with the blue. Now that's what we've been looking at, but I did add the compound of the dodecahedron here. Everywhere that a line crosses the blue is the outline of the dodecahedron. And it's also from the square view, side view perspective. So you're not gonna see just a flat up pentagon face. You're gonna get an edge view here like that. So our dodecahedron in the drawing there is looking like this and it's compounded, meaning that the edges of that icosahedron the blue one are crossing these kind of dark red ones right at the intersection point. So there's our dodeca in there and there's the larger shape of that uh, golden rhombus, which of course is recreating all that structural geometry. And of course we could send out this edge of the icosahedron and recreate this whole thing over and over and over again. And I think that's really kind of the point to look at the the, the information that's contained at the higher levels of the beingness of existence that we have and how that that information moves through a kind of structural geometry. It is like a phi onion of uh, beingness at these multiple levels of existence. And there are non-destructive ways that this movement of, of uh, information or charge is shareable throughout all these levels. Um, these higher selves, let's just call them, are, uh, you know, through the different bodies, you know, the different koshas, the different bodies that, uh, you know, yogis and saints have talked about for ages uh, that we exist within. This is a really nice, easy representation model to look how it's scaled within this non-destructive compressive charge shareable throughout all these levels, just like Dan Winter talks about. This geometry shows this uh, very, very simply that we can keep going for as small or as large as you want into a kind of infinite existence. And honestly, uh, you know, I've done drawings like this before, but this golden God seed, um, you know, really brought this home in a way, you know, to connect the, the, the end and the beginning all together is showing these compressive circles uh, and connecting it to all the other structural geometry really giving an opportunity to put that golden ratio spiral back into the center of the design. And once that happened and if the golden rectangle was shown in the orientation that I uh, is showed at the beginning here, once it was shown with this layout compared to the com compared to this comparison showed here where it's always off center in this diagram where the rectangle is just slapped over this other geometry that has no real reference points to anything with the diagram, this is a real misrepresentation of what's going on with the, the beauty of the golden rectangle as it's found in the source of creation. It's not, uh, you know, it's not breaking anything away from the crystal spiral, it's all there too. It's not separating or creating any type of division. And I think in this day and age, we don't need any more of that. I think we can all move hopefully more towards a more holistic, perspective in a relationship and uh, you'll have more division and divisiveness and I'm thankful sacred geometry um, can be used as a language to do that. So uh, there we go. That's, uh, that's the presentation. I know it was a really ripped through a lot of that material and uh, I was very grateful to share it with you. I want to just show these slides quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on them. But those are just the quick overlays that I did from the book showing how that star tetrahedron was overlaying at the base there and the other one there. So those were the book I was gonna show you in the book, I didn't have it. Um, so uh, let me stop the share. I'll just show you these forms real quick and then we'll, we'll call it good. I, thank you for, for joining me for the video today.
Um, these, these are pretty self-explanatory. I think they're just, uh, it's pretty much just two decagons. I think the most critical point about it is where that division is. Because really this is a golden rhombus uh, in terms of its length of this to the, uh, the width of the circles that are gonna be contained around these two. And this uh, is just my one little handy prop because I whittled it down to being so, so simple that it really just came down to a side view of this. This is, uh, you know, Zome didn't make the appropriate strut length for me to put this other little one inside, just like I showed in the drawing. So I had to do it this way. But, you know, really it is just as simple as this, uh, this little spinning around like that. And, uh, you know, you just have to have a vision in your mind that if this is spinning around, all the geometry of all those other shapes are just contained within this little golden rhombus spinning around like that. Because there's an infinite amount of 360 degree points there. Some of those are going to be decagon squares and everything else that's going to go along there. So um, that was the simplicity of what this all came down to. And remember that the golden spiral could be at any one of these vertices and multiple vertices throughout it just in the diagram of all those drawings showing how it's uh, integrated directly at the heart of creation and the source point. And uh, that's it. So um, once again, uh, please, uh, you know, feel free to enter any comments. Please subscribe to the channel. And uh, I've got one other very amazing video coming up next that is going to revisit the flower of life. And I'm going to show you how to draw the Platonic solids within that, uh, especially the phi ratio forms, without drawing any lines until we actually draw the lines of the forms themselves. So it's going to be all based on circles, intersections, with no lines. So that's going to be a very fun drawing and very, very fun thing to show in the next video. Um, please you know, check out New Geometer's Facebook group. Um, check out my website. I've got apprenticeships. All this information will be in the uh, notes in the description. So thanks again for watching, and I really appreciate your time and uh, thankful to share the sacred geometry with you. Peace and love to you.